today we have the Power Oak EB240, which at the time of this video, I think is among one of the cheapest uh, power banks, and by cheapest, I mean uh, pound per kilowatt uh, you get for capacity, not actual cheapest as in the cheapest one you can buy, because obviously it's massive. So this packs in 2,400 watts, uh, compared to its little Blue, blue Yeti sibling, uh, that's 716 watt hours. Oh, is it what is water? 716 watt hours, that's 2,400 watt hours. Uh, it's also really, really, really heavy. It is 20 point something kilos, and boy! Does it weigh, feel like it weighs every one of them? Uh, wait, let me just check underneath. Uh, yeah, 2,400 watt hours. What is it with these colours? What is, what is this sort of like sky blue, azure blue kind of colour? Now, I've got it plugged in to its holy charger at the moment, which is the same horrible, not horrible, but same fan assisted uh, power box uh, as its um, Blue Yeti sibling. So Blue Yeti and Power Oak are, come from the same uh, parent company. I can't remember if Power Oak's the parent company of Blue Yeti or Blue Yeti or Blue Yeti's the parent company of Power Oak. But anyway, it's the, they're, they're the same thing. Power, Power Oak, if anything, is perhaps the uh, budget uh, end of the uh, family, shall we say. So, let me just throw some numbers at you before we get too carried away. So I said this is the cheapest, so this is 2,400 watt hours, which at the moment this is, comes in as costing somewhere between £1,200 and £1,500. That's almost like nearly 50 pence uh, a water. Your other Blue Eti, that one's the EB70, 700 and something, 716 waters. It's also 700 odd pounds. So that puts it squarely at the basically a pound uh, a water. So this is half the price capacity of that those ones i checked on amazon and they're all much a muchness between all of them all of the other ones are all about a pound of water this one this one is like 50 pence a water for capacity and it's one of the things it can actually plug into the other uh, blue eti and power oak brands because you can plug the other singular battery packs in as a charger for this one and then run things off of that Right, let's talk about specs then. Well, actually, let's unplug this. Hold on, I'm going to let you hear the noise of this um, power brick. Let me take my microphone off. So this is the this is the constant fan from this, and the other the big boy while charging ugh, or actually while doing things, it's got a fan that runs. It's not terribly noisy. But it is quite loud, it is quite loud. But it's also moving quite a lot of air. Right, I said I was going to turn this off. Ah, oh, just for anyone who's curious, it's... The wall says 237 watts coming out the wall and going into the unit we have 214. Do your own efficiency calculations. So let us unplug that one. Turn that off. Sit it there. Oh, right. Let me bring you in for a look at the front. To start with. Oh, this 20 kilo. Oh, this is a good workout, this 20 kilo throwing things about. Uh, right, zoom in. Okay, here is what I'm going to call the front of the machine because the buttons and the screen are here. Here's your input. So, in, basically any input. Um, DC 16 to 60 volt. I mean, it doesn't charge off a car charger. Ah, wait. That'll explain why it didn't come with a car charger in the box. So does that mean we cannot charge this from in-vehicle? Let me just bring the other one over. Yep, it charges anywhere from 12 to 28. Okay. So this, while it allows higher charging, up to 60 volts, which is basically like a full-size solar panel, it can't go less than 16, so it won't take a 12-volt cigarette lighter socket to charge it. 
Well, that's disappointing. And we also have a 12 volt cigarette lighter output. Again, slightly disappointed it's rated at 9 amps. So, probably wouldn't start uh, most diesel heaters because they literally hover at the 10 amps and uh, 9 is not enough. We've got our usual USB mix, 3 amps on the USBs. We've got a USB C, which is nice, a 45 watt. Uh, which is kind of, well, I'm not say old and slow now, but it kind of is because the other ones are charging at 100 plus watts now for USB-C. And here we have the three buttons that do the turn on and off, which are fairly horrible. Regard, on, nope, on, nope, nope. Yes, okay. You kind of have to press and hold for an indiscriminate amount of time. And from there, you can see, can you see? You've got your input, DC output, and AC output, and they just turn on. Again, it's, they're not on and off buttons, you've got to press and hold. A on, AC on. No, obviously I don't have anything plugged into them at the moment. But we can, we can, we can plug in something, an AC load. Uh, right, I have summoned a dehumidifier, uh, a desiccant style of dehumidifier, because it only pulls uh, 580 watts at best. So, although this has 2,400 watt hours of capacity, the inverter inside is only good for uh, 1,000 watts of uh, AC output. The AC plugs, by the way, are on the back of the 20 kilogram monster. That's so the fan. Oh. As it says, 1,000 watts. So, oh wait, I just turned it around. I want to see the front. Oh, come on. Right, I'm going to plug this in and then spin it around again oh, so we can see the... <sighs> oh, well, at least on this one, the plug sits flush. You see? Nice flush. Plug sits nice and high. It's not trying to push the plug out from the bottom. It's not recessed. Uh. 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 <sighs> Did I turn it off? Did it turn itself off? Let's turn it back on. Okay. 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 Right, we're on. It appears that pressing and holding until the uh, battery fills up with power seems to be about right for turning it on and off. And right, got our poor little dehumidifier here. Let's put the AC on. AC on. Right, I'm going to zoom you, zoom you in again on the screen a bit. Oh, 20 kilograms is heavy. Right, are we ready? So... Full power, and let's go on. Oh, there's polystyrene in my dehumidifier. Can you see on the screen, can you? 466 watts. 466 watts. And sadly, much like the other, shall we say, budgety versions of the power thing is, there's no uh, time left to flat, you know, power left. There's not actually a display on the battery of percentage either, it's just literally a battery. With, granted there's five bits in it, so 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. So that's um, doing 500 watts, so it's doing the AC. Uh, there's no point putting a bigger load in it, because it'll just turn off. Well, saying that, is this... God bless you. Is this the heater that lies? Is this the one that says... So it's a two kilowatt, but it should only be one kilowatt at half power. So, ah, let's plug in and see what happens. Right, uh, you off. Off. Okay. Uh, so the dehumidifier there is louder than the. Oh, wait, you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just talking to myself in the background. Right, I've summoned the fan here that should be one kilowatt at half power. Let me put the AC off. And spin this back round again. Oh, 20 kilos. Did I mention it's 20 kilos? Right. Unplug my dehumidifier. Let's stop standing on the plug for the heater. Right. I'll lug the heater in. Let's spin her back round again. Okay. The heater is currently off. We'll put the heater, you see. On! Alright, first setting is fan, so that should be... Well, it's not pointed directly at the heater. Fan. 
fan is 40 watts. And let's go to our first uh, one kilowatt setting. 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,100, 1,200, and error overload. So we got to 1,200, I think 1,200 might be its peak. Not to worry. We can, uh, I think you just reset that by turning the EC off and back on again. Yep, you sure do. So. It's got a nice soft fail, which is kind of what you want. You don't want to be blowing fuses and whatnot. So, 1200 peak, 1000 watt loaded, 2400 watt hours. Right, let's uh, take it apart. I mean, this is why we're all here, really, to be fair. It's to take this thing apart and see what it's like inside. Oh. So, one of the reasons that this is cheaper than its uh, siblings. I'm just going to lose parts on the floor all day today. <sighs> what was I saying? No, oh, this is cheaper because I don't even know if I have to take this screw off to get the... Uh, I might just leave the handle to last. Cheaper reasons is because it's not using uh, life cells. It's not using lithium, lithium ferrous phosphate uh, LIFE PO4. It's just using plain... Uh, it should be lithium manganese cobalt, just your bog standard lithium ion batteries. Can I get a. Oh, you dirty, dirty boys. It's secure bits. Why? Why would you use secure bits? What manner of nonsense? I'll be right back. Power Oak, my, uh, my apologies. Uh, I thought it was a secure head. Because I looked in and I could see a pin in the middle of the uh, thing, but it's not. It's although the pin's there, it's not actually doing anything. So we should just be able to poke an Allen key in and undo them. Yep. Okie dokie. Right. Uh, I'll just bring you back once I've undone all these screws, because nobody wants to watch this bit. Right. So far, I've managed to get the front panel slack. So let's have a quick glance in here. Catch all my screws that are escaping. I'm all, oh, one more. oh, there's two more. It's in my crock. Okay. At this side, I can see a lot of things. Ah, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm going to wait until we're... Basically, there's a fan and plug sockets at this end, but... I'll show you the whole thing when I take it out. Okay, with the power of magnets, I have pulled all the screws out and now have. Wait. No, I have all the screws out. What's holding the front on? Nothing. It's holding it on because it's sitting on it. Oh, there she goes. Ooh. Okay, it wants to go that, that way. Let's uh, rotate it around then. Oh. The back's falling off, that's okay. It can all come out. Ugh. Right, so into this end we've got... Oh, they really didn't leave a lot of room for unplugging things. Jesus. Right, uh, right I'll take the two end panels off first. So there's those uh, nice... Oh, there's like really no room in here, right? This big uh, panel connector, it's covered in the white stuff. Uh, you need to go, boy. Oh, you go that way. Okay. Don't turn on. All right. That comes out. And then we'll take this one out from down here. That comes out. That gives us a bit more room to unplug the connectors. <sighs> right. So that's your front panel. Uh, front panel, that makes sense. Cigarette lighter wire. Uh, large power connectors, EC3 is on them. Uh, it says BAT. And that is EC2. EC2, EC3. Uh, that's a connector to the board screen. And that's one out to the USB and the bits. Right, okay, that's, that's the front. Let's set that over there. I know. I'm such a tease, I'm not like you've seen inside yet. It's a shame, it's a shame for you. Well done. Alright, and at the back, we've just got the three 
outputs and a fan header that's really tight on the board. How can I get to it? Oh, I can unplug it, but I will be able to plug it back in. Okay, one of them. One of them. And one of them. Oh, back panel. And that gives us fun. And we've got positive, positive in, positive out. Wait. All right, they're two separate. Oh my goodness. Shock. Shock and horror. The earth pin's attached. Regard. Look. Earth pins with wire in them to a separate earth connection. And lo and behold, the earth connection inside is attached to the body. This might be a first. Granted, it's probably because this is aluminium. Uh, I presume it's aluminium. Uh, right. How in the love of... We can get all that stuff out. Maybe we don't have to take it out. Maybe we can just peer in. Because there's a lot going on in there. Right. Let me stand this on its end. Because I'd really like to not get electrocuted. Right. Let me bring you over. So we talk this through. Right, so as much as I would like to actually take this thing all the way out, what I don't want to do is get electrocuted. Right, I can see rather large battery connections here. I've got two blacks and a red. And I've got there's even more battery connections in there. Right, stop me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to have a hazard a guess that this circuit board down here is the one for the inverter setup. I suppose they both could be uh, inverter. Wait, have I turned this over? No. Wow. They look like the same circuit. No, twice? No. No, that one's got transformers on it. So the batteries, they are INR 18650-29E. Um, gonna, uh, someone can Google that. Now that looks like a lot of batteries in there. There is a lot of batteries. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll be another stack up there. So that's 12 by God knows how many. That's a lot. I mean, like I would like to take them out, but I am fearful of breaking something. It's not as easy as that one, where it was basically it came up in two halves and then each of them just came apart. There's... There's lots of screws holding all the aluminium bits together to, if I took those screws out and then you could slide that out but I'd have to undo all the battery connections which someone's gone round and nicely cable tied onto things deeper in. Right, I'm going to take you back over to the tripod and then turn it over or it is currently this way up and we'll turn it the other way. Ooh, it hasn't got any lighter, it's still 20 kilograms. <sighs> Oh, right. And from the other end, so basically the batteries run basically all the way to the end. There's, you could maybe get another row, but it probably gives you an odd number. And here we are back with the, right, so that's the AC connections coming off this board. So I'm going to guess that's the inverter board. And the other one is possibly for battery management. It looks like it's got a board on a board, and another smaller board, and I can see separation uh, in there as well. Now, simply from reading upside down, I can see battery sample written on that one, which I presume is for uh, balancing and testing power. There's also NTC battery there, and there's NTC inverter, and there's NTC PV. So there are lots of temperature sensors uh, scattered around here to obviously prevent with prevent and help with overheating. I can see one going in there on that black wire. That's a and there's one going in the batteries here, the non-contact uh, thermometer things. Not non-contact. No, I meant it didn't mean non non-contact. The thermistors, that's the word. The uh, thermistor. So it's actually got temperature sensing, which is good. It's not just uh, a guesswork. 
Oh, and I'm glad I didn't take the handle off because it's absolutely just bolted into the aluminium body. That is a lot of cells. I'll let someone else, smarter than me, hopefully do the mathematics and put it in the comments as to how many batteries that's likely to be. Or, oh, hold on, let me give you the, give you the numbers off the bottom. Ugh. Man. So, 2,400 watts, 14.8 volts, 1,000, no, not 1,600, 162 amp uh, amp hours. 2,400 watts, 14.8 volts, 162 amp hours. So, someone, you can hopefully uh, work that out. So I'm just reading the other bit at the bottom for the input. So the AC, it's the AC adapter, which puts out 42 volts. And it does just say solar panel, 16 to 60 volts, uh, 10 amps, 500 watt max. There's no mention of 12 volt charging at all. So, can't charge this up in your car while you're driving, or your van or your camper. But you can connect up to your solar panels and charge it that way. Push that back in there now. Uh, right, I'm going to put the ends back on this and make sure it still works. Right, I have it all back together. It appears to still turn on. Uh, so far so good, yes. Someone in a previous video asked about putting a socket tester into one of these to see if the live's connected. Not the live, the earth's connected, but we absolutely know the earth is not connected in the other plastic uh, blue Etty for reasons. It's plastic. No point in having a ground that doesn't go anywhere because you can't ground to plastic because it doesn't conduct very well. So let's put a socket tester in one of these. What's wrong? Uh, uh, live neutral reverse. Oh, okay. No, it's got two green lights and a red light, which uh, isn't on there. Two greens and a red is both correct and live neutral reverse, I suppose. Don't matter. I didn't think that was going to do it because it's an inverter and that's not really how that works. What I did want to test was multimeter on continuity. Can I have continuity, please? Continuity. I'm going to put one in the earth bin, in the earth hole, and... Okay, we have continuity to the metal. Not through the paint, though, because obviously it's powder coated painty, but we do have it through the screws in the aluminium. We absolutely have continuity between the earth pins and the outside of the body. Happy days. Right, and just because, out of curiousness, I'm going to put the power tester into this. Let's turn that on, and put the power tester into the plug. Uh, missing earth? Ah, oh, it knows the earth's missing. The earth is absolutely missing. Oh. Okay, so that was, uh, that was an interesting test. It didn't detect the earth's missing. It's madness, right. Off you go over there. You come back round, so we turn you off again. Nice. Did I mention this is 20 kilos? I might have mentioned that a few times now, it's 20 kilos. <laughs> Sit there. Oh, right. Uh, off. There we have it. That is the Power Oak EB240. Uh, probably the cheapest per kilowatt hour uh, power bank you can get uh, at the moment of time of this video being created. That is its small, oh, it's one of its smaller siblings. Uh, the EB70, so that's 716 watt hours. This isn't, this isn't double, this is more than double. This is 2,400 watt hours. I can't do the maths, but wait a minute, maybe I can do the maths, hold on. Triple, triple the capacity and a little bit of that one. For not triple the price. So if that's 700 pounds, this is 1,400. Uh, that's 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 a bargain. This is a ah oh, right right now. This is a bargain. If you're not overly fussed about features like that's got wireless charging on the top of it and uh, a display that shows you rundown time. You know how long it's going to take before it discharges. Wait, that one or the that's this one. That's one. I don't think this one does actually. I think I'm talking up my ass with that one. I don't think that one does. But this one doesn't either. Oh, I'm off topic. Where was I going with this? Uh, yeah. So right now, this at the right time of this video being made, this is the cheapest uh, per 
watt hour battery pack you can get. 2,400 watt hours at about mm, 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. Uh, this is 716 watt hours and about 700 and is it maybe 720 pounds at the moment. Basically, a pound per watt hour and like 50 pence per watt hour. Half the battery price capacity thing. Granted, obviously that's because that's using LiFe PO4 Life uh, LFP cells, and that's just using nickel, manganese, cobalt, uh, you know, the normal lithium ion, as you would call it, cells. That's uh, what it is. Right, this doesn't weigh 20 kilos, does it? No, I mean that's what is that? 12, 12 kilos. This is definitely 20. You no, know, I'm not picking up. No, I've said it enough times. It's definitely 20 kilos. Any questions, comments, anything like that? Put them down below and I'll try and answer them or I'll forward them on and try and get answers for you from somebody who knows uh, better than I do. And as always, thanks for watching. Bonus thermal footage of it charging. So the handle's hot where I've been holding it and there's a very slight temperature change. 16, 14 of the insides and on the fan output inside into the depths again there's what is it like 16 versus 15 outside uh, the hottest bit is probably the power wire actually the power brick it doesn't feel hot but obviously it's it's a little bit warm and I think the wires just being black but it doesn't feel feel hot it's still got a temperature change because ambient in here is like, well, it's ambient 12 degrees, so it's got slight warmth to it. Anyway, bonus thermal footage.